What's up? Quick Saturday video. I was gonna brake test this aluminum 10 millimeter quick link that Brent Roth, who I just visited in Washington State, and we started our How Not to Canyon series. I just have to edit that and we'll get that out soon. He really wanted me to test this thing I've never seen before. And it's a rated Malian Rapide France quick link. Uh, we're gonna pull on this. We'll show you the weight difference between this and another 10 millimeter steel quick link and talk about whether or not you should use them. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to a quick pull test video where we are going to test steel versus, I don't know if I'm gonna try to actually break this. <laughs> oh, maybe we will, okay. Anyways, uh, this is rated for 25 kilonewtons this way and 10 this way, which is ironic because I think some of the steel ones that we have are rated for a lot this way and 10 this way, regardless of the size, we made a whole video about that. And that was because Yan Kamu from Bliss Climbing was so curious why they would all be rated the same. Ironically, this is also rated 10 kilonewtons this way. Let's go weigh it. What's that? Oh, that's, I guess you just have to subscribe to see that later. Um, run grams. So we're at 48 grams with this guy. And we are at 137 with this guy. So almost three times lighter. And just for kicks and giggles, this is pretty much 9.97. And the steel one the steel one is 10.1. Now before I break test this, I want to talk about something is the threads gallop really bad which means it gets really tight and really stiff and hard to use i can get it on there but uh it could be unlikely that you get it open without a wrench you can put anti-seizing uh lubricants on there and stuff but this is something if you were going to go retrieve them later you would probably need a wrench to do so another thing to keep in mind is this is a conversation starter why is there an aluminum quick link other than it's awesome to have a lighter weight? Where do you think we can justify using these? Uh, Brent Roth does canyons, and he was thinking that first descents or descents, not sure how that works in a canyon, that uh, you would just take these and then you can go back and retrieve them and replace them with stainless steel. Do you need to? What's the value in this? Is it temporary? Is it great? Is it better for maybe, well, caves, this would uh, exfoliate? I forget the phrase, but it kind of looks like a, a croissant if you leave aluminum in a cave for too long. But if you're going to go do something super hard and super long and you just need something temporary, but you don't want to use soft shackles, um, this might be a thing. But why not just use aluminum carabiners in this case? This is $8, a aluminum carabiner. If you're rappelling and doing things, should be a locking one. And so that's what, 20 or 30? So yeah, there's a, I don't know. If you're gonna use one, well, it's not redundant. So does this solve a problem that doesn't even exist? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> That was way more interesting than I thought. So, um, <laughs> you won't believe this. This is our Labjack T7 Pro. I moved it over here for less interference. So we, I think, got a better number. Um, for almost 48 kilonewtons. And over here, this one's actually calibrated. That one needs work. And we plugged the Lodestar directly into the wall. So I think that is keeping us our chart cleaner. But you can see it just gradually went up and then just plateaued at 48.8 because my hydraulic doesn't go above 48. Now, why would I even think about that if the thing is rated for 25? That's crazy. Good news and bad news. I'll throw my two to one on here so we could really like break this thing. Bad news is 
I don't think I'm going to be breaking this steel quick link. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. Okay, it's connected our span set to big fat am steel sling, which goes through a pulley and back to the hydraulic for a two to one. And because I don't want to use the soft shackles inside of the other load cell because I have uh, the shackles coming soon for these eyes, I took it out of the system because I even double wrap this. Because when you start dealing with forces this high, things get scary. I'm really glad I have that. <laughs> um, wow, it's not really warm. Shocking. Oh, no. I forgot to put a catcher on. So this thing went flying. Oh, this is just so interesting. Why is that there? Wow, that thing is really heavy to be flying around. So this is super interesting. And so is that. We were so close with our hydraulic just at 48. But uh, yeah, it went up and then down. Neato. That is unpolished aluminum. Pretty cool stuff. I'll make you a deal. Smash that like button and I'll pull on this one. Working load limit, 1100 kilograms. Malian Rapide, 10 millimeter quick link. You guys are so spoiled. Okay, now that one's warm. That, that's pretty rad. Oh, that's not that much higher than the aluminum. It's cool to have a graph, but it's also what I thought it would look like. Our crane scale here says 14,600 pounds, and the, uh, the aluminum one was 11,000 something, so pretty close. So I'd like to start a conversation. Why don't we use why don't we use aluminum quick links? Uh, stainless steel maybe better for corrosion, maybe for long term. But if we're going to connect high lines, segmented high lines every fifty meters for our long world record projects or anything longer than fifty meters, we I didn't like using quick links because they're so heavy, especially if you have twenty of them in a system. But if you're going to connect the main loop and main loop together. Why don't we use these? Cyclic loading? Is that really a problem? If you're, let's say, not cyclically loading it, you know, you pull it to, let's say, two to six at the most, right? And that's only during whips. You're not freestyle highlining this thing. And in the wind, it stays under, it goes from like five to six, five to six. It doesn't go from 0.5 to six. That's the cyclic testing that's done if there's not big cycles, there's not a lot of tests. It's all theoretical math. And you're dealing with forces that are under, way under 20% of the uh, MBS of this. And once you're under 20%, cyclic loading is theoretical math again, because all the tests that are done are kind of in a like a 0 0.5 to 8 range of a carabiner that breaks at 22. So you, you kind of have to have these bigger cycles closer to MBS to even make it uh, affordable to even test it so uh, i would love to do some cyclic loading tests but the kind of testing i want to do is uh would take weeks if not years <laughs> on a machine in order to to properly test what i'm thinking but steel bends and then breaks this snaps so that's kind of a pros and cons um and this gulls up i mean you still kind of need a wrench if you were going to leave this out for a while but you definitely would need a wrench to undo this even if it was only outside for a little bit i just don't see much difference between leaving this and a carabiner now this is twice as strong as a carabiner that you would leave do you technically need two is redundancy super important if you're going to repel with only two kilonewtons of force with something that we just showed you breaks at 48 you decide I look forward to reading your comments below. Please subscribe to help get me to 100,000 subscribers. Push that like button. Go to our shop page and 
We appreciate your donations. I think that's it. Get stoked on the drop tower. We're dropping a video Monday on the updates on that. Cheers.